Gotham Knights Episode 7, the show that forgets the plot of its last episode before the next one has started, presumably because it thinks the audience has as well. We start with Tom Cruise descending from the ceiling. I don't know how, because none of these windows are actually open, <laughs> but we absolutely didn't set this up inside the building and forget how somebody was going to enter. Trust us, bro. Now, at this point, there was only one thing going through my mind. That's definitely a woman. Look, it's a burglar who's actually successful at doing something. It's not gonna be a bloke. But the burglar goes over and stealthily steals a painting. Yeah, it's definitely a woman. But what comes next is astronomically stupid, and it only gets worse when we get later into the episode. And when we get to that point, you can basically feel the smugness of the writer just radiating from the screen. Because <laughs> they go over, put the painting on a wall, walk back into the center of the room while the alarm's going off. <laughs> Yeah, we're just gonna wait for a while. Because they're actually waiting for the security to turn up. This guy's got a gun. He could stand by the door and just blow him away, but apparently no. <laughs> yeah, we're going to run towards the criminal so they can disarm us. And they're not the only one. This happens repeatedly with every security guard. Because sure, that guy gets taken out one shot. This guy appears in the far corner, a long way away from her. <laughs> could have shot at her from across the other side of the room, no. I'm gonna run at her so I can get one shot as well. This time though, there's a guy on the stairs. Actually shoots for once. Unfortunately, he's a terrible shot at five foot away. So the burglar turns into Spider-Man, starts running up a wall. I'm not even sure that'd make you more difficult to hit. Personally, if it was me, I'd probably wait until they landed and then take aim, but apparently we're not gonna think of that. Also, it's a good job he's got a revolver because he very quickly runs out of bullets. It was at this moment he knew he'd messed up. So he tries to reload his revolver when the person's too far away from him. I'm in the UK and I know that's a bad idea. Although not as stupid as what the burglar's about to do, where they grab the multi-million dollar painting, which they specifically came here to steal. They're not after any other painting. It's specifically that one that they need. Don't worry about that though. <laughs> Let's use this as a frisbee. It's not as if art is fragile or anything. Luckily though, he very kindly grabs it and holds it for us so he doesn't damage it on the way, simply so they can take them out very easily. Yeah, put the painting down carefully now, love. It's not as if you used it as a frisbee five seconds ago. But then this guy comes running through a door all the time in the world to deal with the problem. Unless he's been totally outplayed and can't see through the handrail of the stairs. I don't think it's my fault. They opened the show with this. But with that, finally, all the security guards have been taken care of. So we grab the painting that we could have destroyed, but luckily didn't, and fly back up into the ceiling where none of the windows are open, so I still don't know how she's gonna escape. Oops, I said she, kinda given the game away there. Spoilers. They were so proud of that, you can tell. But then we cut over to the diverse news reporters. And at this point, I'm like, it's probably one of them. Look, this is Gotham Knights. If you need to work out a puzzle, just work out who would be the most obvious and stupid person, and it's gonna be them. So at this point, I felt I had a 50-50 chance. But they say there's been a spout of robberies, and this is just one of them. All of the art pieces are worth millions. They don't say if any of the other art pieces got frisbeed across the room as well. That the GCPD enlisted the help of noted criminologist Detective Sophia Green. Probably her, that isn't it? What's that? There's been a load of art there and the police commissioner has had to hire a special person you've never seen before to solve the crimes. It's probably them. That'd be really stupid and obvious. Now, what I wasn't expecting in this part is for one of our gang to be incredibly based. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, we're not going to solve crime when I want to solve crime for rich people. And we get this guy going, well, actually, it's probably a bit more important that we don't have people stealing our history. What's that? Someone in the CW saying that history wasn't bad and we should destroy it because we're all evil. Honestly, it was a bit of a refreshing change. But before that, we've got to talk about the ending of the last episode. I don't know why, because it's nothing to do with this episode at all. The press shows a previous episode where they just threw money into the street. Why do they have to keep replaying the worst day of my life? Honestly, I sympathize. It'd be like watching the series finale of Valmer again. Well, at least we didn't walk away from that empty-handed. We got the ledger. Ah, yes, the ledger. Remember that. The encoded book, which we solved in the previous episode, which has everything we need to know about the Court of Owls, possibly even their location written in it. I'm sure this episode will all be about decoding the book and acting on the information inside it, right? I'm not sure what we get from an art history field trip. I agree. Let's definitely solve the book with the, all the solutions in it. So those paintings just get sold on the black market because cultural artifacts aren't as sexy as a mob
job day planner? This is where he starts to make a lot of sense, and I don't know why CW are doing it. Now, I do disagree that they should completely ignore the book with all of their answers in it, but from a cultural perspective, this is an unusual thing for CW to push. God forbid we try and save anything that'll outlast ourselves. Alright, where's CW and what have you done with it? Since when has a CW character ever spoken about preserving history, tradition, and leaving a legacy for the future? Seriously, if one of them comes out and says we should respect the law, Somebody at CW has been kidnapped. We have way bigger problems right now. Well, you're right about that. Donuts was out of strawberry frosted with sprinkles. Okay, I knew it couldn't last. Look, I know you want to preserve history, but first we've got to eat these donuts, mate. <laughs> so you've been training at Police Academy. And until we can figure out how the Talons lived so long, we've got about as many answers as Brody. Have you considered decoding the ledger, which may have all of your answers inside it? We just mentioned the ledger. Why aren't we doing anything with the ledger? There might be a way to find out. Yeah, decode the ledger. Yeah? How? The ledger! I feel like I'm talking to the guy from Memento who can only remember the last 30 seconds at all times. I said I'd get you answers, not give them. Love, unless you're gonna fetch the ledger, I don't really care. But they continue to waffle on, basically going through every single plot point of the entire series in the first few minutes of the episode. It's incredibly bizarre because all of them all know this stuff. It's literally to catch up somebody who hasn't seen the last six episodes. When I said they'd do this at the start, because they would assume anyone that's seen the stuff previously wouldn't see this one, I wasn't actually being serious, but that's literally what we're doing. So after the recap, we cut over to the guy who's running for mayor that got stabbed by Talon, and yet for some reason, this professional assassin pulled a reaver and stabbed him through the chest and couldn't even manage to kill him. Talon has got to be the most useless assassin I've ever seen. All he had to do with that blade is wiggle it a bit. Oh, and his cheating wife is here, along with the guy she's cheating on him with. I don't know why this scene is in the TV show, it's just repulsive. The poor guy's on his deathbed and his wife brings her fancy man to it. Sorry. How is he? I don't know, why are you asking? In case you can bang him as well. How are you? Exhausted. Okay, love, you don't have to brag about it to him. We already know he kept you up all night. I'm gonna get some air. I've never heard it called that before. When I heard Lincoln was attacked at your office, I panicked. Why did you think he'd done it? Don't worry, love, you're not worth it. Why him, not me? All I could think about was you. Okay, so you're the one that did it then, are you? I don't know, because we don't find out in this episode, but I'm assuming she's the one that activated Two-Face, she's the one that's been controlling him without the music, and that she wanted to offer her husband so she could get with him. Why do I think that? Because it's the most obvious and worst storyline possible, and so that's the one they've probably chosen. I can't believe I'm saying this. I can, because I think you're using your husband dying to try and bang a copper. <laughs> Harvey, what the hell is going on in Gotham? Terrible script writing, that's what's going on. Look, don't worry, they need to go on strike for more money because this is quality stuff. You and Brody need to get out of the city. We all need to get out of this city and I'm just watching it. Unfortunately, you signed a contract to take part in this thing, so I don't actually think you can escape. You can't trust anyone. Especially your agent. He hasn't exhibited the best of judgment right now. Can I trust you? Why do we have a character? flirting with another guy when her husband is dying in the other room. If she's not part of the Court of Owls, they should just make her one, because that is savage. But at that moment, we cut over to the police department watching the CCTV footage, where we observe the criminal having an IQ of roughly 65. First, the guy doesn't think twice about tripping the alarm. He just waits for security. That is an excellent point. It's almost like the thief has no idea what they're doing. It's really stupid. I mean, is he being cocky or just dumb? The latter. He's being smart. You know when I said the first scene got worse when you heard about it later? Later on. Welcome to the later on. This is the moment I was sure who the thief was, because I don't believe anyone would be that stupid normally. But let's find out how it's smart for a thief to wait to be caught by security. The thief waits for security to arrive so he can take them out, because if they're down, they can't pursue. They can't shoot at him as he makes his way up and down. Yeah, just wait for the six guards, then defeat the six guards. They can't do anything else to you. The guards can't shoot you if you're going up to the roof anymore because you've already fought them, and they've shot you when you're on the floor. She's talking about fighting six people as if it's 100% certain with zero risk. They've got guns. You can die. That's generally why people don't go into fights with security guards. And now he has an 18th century American landscape to go with this realist piece he stole from the Met. Yeah, I'm sure he's really concerned with his eclectic art collection. Personally, I'd go for an escape option which stops people shooting at me all together, rather than just fighting people to the death. Oh, and later on, the master thief plan to just set off the alarm and then defeat all of the security guards. They act as if that's the perfect heist. I mean, it's hardly Ocean's Eleven, is it? Well, I'm more concerned with the interesting mix of MOs he's using. Hey, up, she mentioned modus operandi. This is gonna be one smart detective, I can tell. High-end thieves like this, they spend years honing their craft. That's the kind of conclusion that Mr. Bean would have come up with. Why would it take years honing your craft to pick up a painting 
and then beat five people up in the face. Someone who spent years honing their thievery wouldn't have set the alarm off in the first place. Not, I'm going to get caught because if I beat you up, I can't get caught anymore. I tell you what, I can't wait for this police brainstorm because if we put all of our IQs together, we might actually hit double figures. What kind of burglar changes their MO from job to job? I don't know. Maybe a burglar that has to break into different places. Different security requires different methods of getting around it. This isn't complicated. It's not like Dexter, who just wants a specific target. The burglar doesn't have any choice if they want specific paintings. One that doesn't want to get caught. We're definitely not giving you a signal of to who it is. I wonder if the person who thinks the criminal is super intelligent and definitely doesn't want to get caught, because that's why they're changing their plan for everything could be the one who's doing it. I can't possibly tell. But we cut over to Joker, who's been busy. She's actually stolen a car from the university. Apparently they use it in driver's ed. In America, do your schools teach you how to drive? I actually think that's a good idea, it's just ours don't. They're too busy teaching us about things you'll really find useful later in life, like Pythagoras. In fact, me using his name in a video is the only time that's ever been useful to me. It was surprisingly easy. I mean, once I figured out which steering wheel to hotwire. Why would you not know which steering wheel to hotwire? Are you telling me they put you through driver's ed and you don't know which side of the road you drive on? I mean, if I got it wrong, it would be understandable, but you... Eh. Turns out it's the one you think. Of course it's the one you think. Why would it be the other one? But that's not the only thing she's stolen recently. She wants answers as to why Talon's still wandering around. How is he still alive after like 130 years? And so, to get answers... It's Granny, everybody! <laughs> Easily my favourite character through the whole series, and after this episode, she's only got better. Oh, are we gonna have some fun in these scenes? <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. But before that, we're back with Little Miss Moffat. She's been looking at the paintings that's been stolen, and they all have something in common. Trouble is, the paintings didn't have anything in common. Oh right, I forgot. She just lies to them at first, for no reason whatsoever. There's no pattern. Why steal these? But there is a pattern. And she knows there's a pattern, so why is she telling everybody there's not a pattern? In most of the burglaries, the thief passed over other works of art that were much more valuable than the ones that were stolen. Okay, Blondie, why don't you just tell them what the pattern is that you already know? Or maybe there actually is a pattern. There's no pattern! Unless there is. Just, just give us the answer, love. I don't know what she's doing in this scene. Maybe they were just a minute short and thought, yeah, we can just get her for waffle for a bit. No one will notice. What if that rich person was Alan Wayne? That's right, all the paintings belong to Alan Wayne when he was killed. So the previous minute of footage where she went, no, there's definitely no pattern. I can't work out what the pattern is. They've got nothing in common. She knew what the pattern was. It's sufferable. And who do we know that's interested in all things Alan Wayne? Batman's son. The Court of Owls. And you? Could be them. Could not be. With insights like that, I can understand why you're an integral part of the team. The winner of the lottery this week will be somebody who's left-handed. Or right-handed. She is right 100% of the time as she just predicts everything. Looks like this is a job for the Gotham Knights after all. So is bankrupting the CW, but you're not making an episode about that, are you? <laughs> That's how I felt watching that last scene as well. I sympathize, love, I really do. But you have to be nice. <laughs> Down! Do not make me tase you again! <laughs> About that bit. I was genuinely entertained in this episode, and it's when you get my two favourite characters together. <laughs> you get Joker and Granny, and you might have a good show on your hands. I mean, seriously, who doesn't want to see the Joker's daughter go around an old people's home randomly tasing people? Did she wet herself from the taser or old age? Now that's a mystery worth solving. You tase the senior citizen! Just put it on the lowest setting, it's fine. Based economy. I don't know why we're talking about her as if she's just some innocent person we met on the street. She did want to murder you in the last episode you met her. This is elder abuse. Was that the most severe terminology you could come up with, love? I also can't help noticing you're pretending to care, but not letting her go, or even getting her out of the boot of the car. Trunk for my American friends out there. Because apparently you strap elephants to the back of your cars. Whereas we prefer to think of them as types of shoes. Just think of what that poor nursing home staff has to endure. Trust me, Carrie, they're probably relieved to see you're gone. Yeah, just think of the feeling you get when an episode of Gotham Knights ends. It's very similar. But she persuades Robin, somehow we have to kill Talon and she's the only person that knows how he became that way in the first place. And if we can find out what made him immortal, Maybe we can find out how to end it. Sometimes you gotta be bad to get the goods. I think that's actually the tagline of Portland. You wanna take her arms or legs? I really hope you don't mean with a machete. <laughs> but unfortunately, we're back with little Miss Moffat, who are going through the police databases looking for evidence about the art crimes. Apparently, Detective Green is a bit of a badass. Don't worry, love, that's because she doesn't have dangly bits. Rumor going around the GCPD was that she's the reason Catwoman hung up her claws. Ah yes, this policewoman, who thinks it's smart for a criminal to wait to get caught, so they can beat up the people catching them so they can't get caught, is the person that stopped Catwoman stealing things. Really stretching credulity at this point, aren't you? But one of their team has a plan. If the police don't know what's going on, then 
I think I might know somebody who does. And you know who knows more about crime than cops? Criminals. Only if you're talking to the ones who don't get caught. Over to Castiel now and somebody really wants a piece of him. I'm still at the house. I had to get Brody off to his grandparents. In other words, I sent the kids off to the babysitters. My husband is on his deathbed. Would you like to come round to my house? Someone keeps calling the house and hanging up. It's probably Domino's. I feel like I'm being watched. That'll be the camera that's over your left shoulder, love. Would be funny if they hadn't made a look the other way and she just looked directly at the camera. Harvey, I'm scared. Out of this entire series, I think this is the sickest part. If I'm right and she's using the death of her husband to bang a copper, I'm gonna be disgusted. I really am. There's a unit downstairs. There's another one on your floor. Oh, I didn't expect that from you, Castiel. It's like, look, I would do the job myself, but there is two guys there that can take care of you already. <laughs> Give it a week, the entire GCPD will have had a crack. You told me not to trust anyone. It's a bit late for that. If you've got two police on your floor, you're already trusting them. What if someone is watching me? Someone is watching you. You're on TV. I don't know what to do. Hand in your notice. I don't know what you want from me. I'll be right there. But I do know what she wants from you. <laughs> I knew this show was pleased when they managed to hire Castiel as part of the crew. But in this episode, they just treat him like a piece of meat. Meanwhile, at a bar, oh, who could she possibly be trying to pump for information? That's right, it's Dylan McKillen, the guy she banged so that she could pay for her brother to have his bits off. I don't know why he's scared of her, though. Ah, please don't beat me up. You're two feet shorter than me. She couldn't be less intimidating if she actually tried. She's even smiling at him. Unless you're here to give me back all the money that you and your friends took from us. Why are you backing up as if she's a viper? Money you and your pals took from innocent people? And it's not like you gave it back to the original people. You threw it into the street and random people picked it up. So the people they stole it off are still out of pocket. It's not like you did a good thing. I'm in a better place right now. I'm, uh, I'm in therapy. Why? How does... My ex-girlfriend robbed my criminal enterprise leeches of therapy. Working out my issues, and so seeing you just a little triggering for me. Oh no! I'm sorry, but your presence is triggering me because I'm actually a 12-year-old. This entire speech is basically the most Californian thing I could think of. If I needed just one example of why I wouldn't pay Hollywood writers more, it'd be this. I wouldn't be here if I didn't need your help. Yeah, but I don't know why that's an argument for him to actually help you. Look, if I didn't need to use you, then I wouldn't be talking to you in the first place. Isn't convincing. And what happened last time you said that? Because I do. And he responded as if what she said would convince him. You don't walk in a bar and go, look, I'm going to use you because I think you're filth. And he's like, well... I would help you. But the last time I was taken in by that fancy messaging, it all went wrong. It's like, obviously. Listen to what she's saying. We've both made mistakes. You made mistakes. You were going to turn us in for the reward money. That's a great idea, actually. Why don't you turn her in for the reward money? This would be awesome. <sighs> My therapist made me realize that I was trying to punish you. You're a gangster. She betrayed you. She stole all of your money. Yes, punish her. Hand her into the police for the reward money. For not reciprocating my feelings. No, you were going to hand her into the police for the reward money. Not because she hurt your feelings. Dylan, I... I'm working through it. Why? Hand her in for the police for the reward money. I'm sorry for the way I left things between us. So am I. Because nobody got any reward money. Look, how about we just arrest you now and let bygones be bygones? You deserved better. And deep down, I just want you to be happy. Why? Hand her in for the reward money. She used you, stole a load of money from you, came back and stole a load of money from you again. Why is he sorry? This is the most unbelievable part of the entire series. We need Joker to come in here and drop half a pool cue. Even if that's not with me. I want you to be happy too. I don't want you to be happy. I want you to be arrested. We are not the same. But like, not with me. Call the police. Why are we acting as if she's got any leverage in this situation at all? But she continues to feed him a load of stuff. Oh, I want you to be happy. Oh, it's okay. I'm really sorry about what I did before. And he just swallows it all up. Literally nothing about this scene makes sense. And I think it's just a writer getting doe-eyed going, oh, but we can't leave it that way between them. So they wrote this scene in, which is utterly pointless. I'm just glad I got to tell you how sorry I am. It sounds like you're really taking care of yourself, Dylan. No, because taking care of himself would involve a SWAT team raiding the building. Keep it up. It's impossible for him to keep it up because I think you've just sucked all the testosterone out of him. Wait. See. What do you need from me? She used him for the first time. She used him the second time and she's just used him again. Why hasn't he found the police? If you ever want the perfect example of how not to be a man, welcome to Gotham Knights, everybody. What do you know about all those art heists? As it turns out, not a lot. Now, I know there's a saying, children should be seen and not heard, but I can't help thinking that in this scene, somebody got a little confused. I think she manages to put more acting talent into her whines than other people in this show do into their general speech. Ow! Little bitch! 
is cheaper than waxing. <laughs> there you see, yes, you did get kidnapped by high school students, but there's an upside. Now they start asking her questions about Talon to get information out of her, but she's a wee little bit miffed about her treatment so far. And I am convinced you intentionally went over the same speed bump again and again. Seriously? <laughs> Going into this series, I never expected to like Joker's daughter as a character, and now all I want is the Joker Granny TV show. She just kidnaps her and they go off on adventures around the world. That might be the first CW show to actually be worth watching. We're really sorry about that. I'm not. I think that's the best thing to ever happen to this show. But they say all we want to know is how Talon has actually survived this long. We've dropped rocks on him and he's still come back to life. Something weird is happening. Well, you can just ask him yourself when he comes to chop off your adorable little heads. You can tell she's been watching the show. I mean, at this point, she's supposed to be the villain, but when the main characters are so dislikable, she comes across as a hero. Or as CW would put it, a hero. To chop off your adorable little heads. <laughs> But Granny is pissed. I'm not gonna tell you anything. You stole my music box. Let's torture her. What? Now that escalated quickly. But that is exactly what happens. Yes, she's got an oxygen tube, but it doesn't really work if you turn the oxygen off. So we end up with Granny choking. Well, Joker's like, can you speak up? Can you speak up? Do you need to breathe? Are you having trouble breathing? Well, let me fix that. Turns it off completely before Robin loses her mind and saves her. I would show you this. I'm just not sure I can. Oh, you do. Awful. Okay, she's definitely been watching the show. Because neither of them need to cut your oxygen off to learn that. But Robin tries a different tactic. How about I just give you the music box and then you tell me everything you know? I'm sure that'll work. Meanwhile, the one who's managed to find the most gullible man in the world comes back to the gang. So, you get any art heist related insights from the criminal underworld? They're just as stumped as the cops. So what was the point of that scene? That entire scene was a waste of time and served no purpose to the story. As far as I can tell, it was literally just meant to humiliate the guy and basically say that everything is men's fault and they need to go to therapy before making themselves subservient to somebody who is purely manipulating them. Hey, it's a horrible message, but then again, these are Batwoman writers, and I have no idea how this episode is so different in quality. Because it is. You've got the Robin Joker granny scenes, which I actually really like. And then you've got these. It's almost like the writers are trying to good cop, bad cop the audience. See how long they can take it before they break. Okay, fine. I went to go see Dylan. Yeah, no, you know, I'm sorry. He does not strike me as someone with the greatest criminal mind. No, but he does have ears. I'm just surprised you noticed he had ears, because I thought you'd be far too busy with his dick. But they managed to track down all of Alan Wayne's paintings, and this very coincidental only one that hasn't been stolen. And that's the painting, which she's showing everybody, and so you'd think they'd know what it'd look like. No, later on, nobody knows what it looks like, despite the fact they're looking at it at this very moment. And that's his next target. Yeah, you might want to remember that, mate. It could come in handy later. Look, if the Court of Owls wants those paintings, we gotta figure out why. And I can think of one person to ask. Be able to think of more if you had an IQ over room temperature. So they come up with a completely original plot point, which has never been done in this series before. The going to break in and steal it. I swear, every episode of this TV series is exactly the same. Let's recap the previous episodes, talk about our feelings for a bit, and then break into a place and steal something. At some point, I'm sure we're gonna come to a plot. Maybe if we hold in there, we'll get lucky one day. And so here we are at the art storage. We're gonna stake it out and try and catch the thief in the act. It sure is an ugly building for all those beautiful works of art. That's because it's a warehouse, mate. Nobody's actually meant to see it. They're not on display. Four walls and a roof to keep thieves out and the weather off it. That's all it's for. I mean, I'm with you on modern architecture, but this is not the time for it. I've been here for hours. Where the hell is this thief? Maybe they just felt the waves of evil radiating from you and thought, I'm not going near that. I'm going to wait for another night. But in their incredibly inconspicuous hiding place, standing next to a van, they notice the thief. And so they move in to attack. Except when they come around the car. Where'd he go? Oh, he's vanished. Where could he possibly be? Based economy. This episode's looking up after all. But whoever the base criminal is, because we definitely don't know by this point, it wasn't obvious, keeps shooting at them, and at this point, I just wish she was better at aiming. I mean, sure, she nailed the first shot, but then missed everything else. But then the Bat Brat has an idea, and I don't know how any of this works, but just if I described it to you, you wouldn't believe me. So here it is in all of its glory. <laughs> They couldn't even get the Bat Rat to do something good, it still had to end up as pure luck, as well as being incredibly stupid. Because sure, he throws it, but it like curves. He sort of throws it out over there and somehow ends up going that way. I don't know why he's lobbing things sideways instead of just straight on to begin with. But then secondly, it's clearly going for a head. That'll hit a forehead, bang on, there's no way it's hitting anywhere lower. We can see where it's going, until somehow it hits the gun. And as you can see during this pause, it does look incredibly realistic. But then she fires down and it ricochets off 
I think it might be the tire, but the camera doesn't really keep up with it. Into a knee. What are the odds? And remember, that blade has done no damage, right? And they've got a long way to get to her. So unless she ended up shooting herself in the knee, all he would have done is tipped her gun down for a split second, and then she would have just carried on firing again. Because there was no way they were closing the gap in that time. So the only way this thing was useful is if that happened, as if he intended it or something. As it is, they take advantage of her completely going down. I don't know why she's not, like, shooting under the car or something. Just because you can't stand doesn't mean you've lost the ability to use your arms. But then they run around the car. She's still got working arms. She could shoot them at point-blank range at this point. Basically, they should both be dead. Luckily, for some reason... Decides to not do anything. So they take a mask off in the least surprising reveal of all time. Honestly, after she's described the most stupid plan a thief could have as being really intelligent. Uh, yeah, it was obvious it was her, wasn't it? Detective Green? I don't know why you're surprised. Mind you, you couldn't see inside the police station like we could, I guess. And also the writers make you incredibly stupid, so they've definitely written you at their level. <laughs> My favorite thing is how she has to confirm it. Detective Green? Yeah, thanks for letting them know. They hadn't already guessed when they saw your face. Meanwhile, Granny's about to get her music box back. They take the tape off her hands, because after kidnapping a serial killer's daughter, you definitely wanted to have her hands free. I'm sure that's not going to backfire. And because Robin's nice to her, Granny starts to spill everything. I used to be a dancer. When I was young, I would attend the most elegant parties. Must have been interesting to see all the dinosaurs walking around. That sounds so lovely. Uh, do you remember who was there? That's an odd question, considering you act like your audience can't remember previous episodes. Oh no, dear, we always wore masks. <laughs> I don't even know why they say that as if we don't know. We've already seen them in this series multiple times. She said we came to an arrangement. Her father would kill for the court of owls and in return she would get everything she ever wanted that was until the town turned against him when he was called the butcher of gotham somebody had to pay but on the night before he was taken care of the court of owls came to him and proposed an agreement we give you this sort of super serum and it will allow you to survive and carry on doing our bidding fortunately she can't remember the name of the substance they gave him but she does know that the Court of Owls used the last of it that they had, and so they can't give it to anybody else. And they have been searching for more of it ever since. Well, I guess we've just been told what they want the paintings for then, haven't we? Don't you just love a show that spells out to you what the villain's plans are so you don't have to work it out for yourself? Really saves on the brain power. But Granny doesn't want to say anymore. I'm so parched. Robin, could you be a deer and go and fetch me some water, please? And with that, she gets the Joker alone. Kidding me? Sometimes you have to be good to get the goods. I'm not sure getting a glass of water for your kidnapped victim classifies as being good. But then again, this is Hollywood. They have really low standards. Compared to the rest of them, that makes you a saint. <laughs> Easily the best two people in the series. Before that, though, we go back to the poor victim who's trying to cheat on her dying husband. Harvey? Yeah, it's me. Why have you gone round to her house? We're all going to pretend we care about the guy in the hospital bed when we're going round to her house, are we? Have you gotten any more calls? What, you don't think one booty call's enough? What do you think she's gonna do? Schedule him in for every hour? Yes, but I stopped picking up. I'm not surprised. After a while, you're gonna start getting friction burns. Okay, well... Why don't you finish packing and I'll, uh... Finish you. <laughs> oh, Castiel, you dirty dog, you. Uh-oh, Castiel's just sensed his competition. Who is this? Why are you trying to get with my fancy woman? Hello? No wonder they hang up. It was a man's voice on the other end. I, they don't want any of that. Sometimes you get more than you bargain for. Look, it may be 2023, but people still have their limits. I'm calling GCPD. Seems like a bit of an overreaction. They don't have to get with you, Castiel. Look, they turned me down. I'm going to arrest them for bigotry. Hey, it's Dan. I need you to run a trace on the last call to this number and then call me on my cell as soon as you've got that. And that's how he took care of the last people he met on Hinge. I, I don't know if I'm too scared or not scared enough. Hey, I mean, Castiel must be packing if he invokes that reaction in her. God, I feel like I'm losing my mind. <laughs> he is about to bang your brains out. Your husband was just stabbed. I think you're handling this as well as you possibly could. Unfair. Obviously, when your husband gets stabbed, the best thing that you can do is call in your fancy man to take care of things for a while. I mean, yes, he's recovering in hospital, but I have needs. He's dying, but won't somebody please think of me? I hate everything about this. I hate everything about this. Hey, that was quick. Well, that's disappointing, Castiel. I expected better. Do you know Miranda Livingston? 
because that's my bit on the side. Castiel's going at it as well. This isn't a love triangle anymore, it's a love quadrilateral. Not personally, but Lincoln does. She's the woman I suspect he's been sleeping with. Oh, of course they are. That's what we're gonna do, are we? Because it would seem remarkably rude if the wife was cheating on her husband, especially when he's dying in a hospital. But what we can do to try and balance it out, to make it seem like she's the moral one, don't you understand? She's the victim in all of this. Well, we'll just say that he was cheating on somebody first. Any time in this show, someone without dangly bits might be doing something wrong. Don't worry, we've got an excuse lined up. Don't you be doing that face now, Castiel. You were the one banging her first. The look is, oh, I can't believe that he cheated on her. She just cheated on him. Who the hell are you? It's unfortunate you didn't shoot him in the face, love, because now we're going to have to answer that question and nobody wants that. Where are the Gotham Knights? That's weird because you look like Hannibal Lecter. You kidding? What are you, a cop or a thief? Both. That's the only reason she hasn't been caught, despite the fact she has really terrible plans. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna get caught by security and then beat them up because then security can't catch me. <laughs> I'm a cop who's being extorted into being a thief. Because God forbid you were just a thief, right? We couldn't have someone with dangly bits being evil. Oh, it's not my fault the environment made me this way. This might be why Joker and Granny are the best characters in this thing. Because they're actually just evil. They are villains and it's not like, oh, the environment made me this way. Let's try and be sympathetic. You can't even have a thief who wants to rob things in this. But meanwhile, the Bomb defusal experts are bonding over fixing a wound. It's just a scratch. Well, don't tell me that now. I just ruined a perfectly good shirt for this. <laughs> oh yeah, just in case you thought we weren't gonna go there. Oh no, we're gonna go there. This TV show has about 17 different love triangles, but you know what? We could always make another one. Worst case scenario, it leaves a very sexy scar. Surely the worst case scenario is it leaves a horrible scar. The worst case scenario is it goes gangrenous and you lose your limb. I just don't think she's got a particularly good imagination. But it's not her brain that people are thinking about. Scars aren't sexy. Agree to disagree. Oh yeah, we're going there, all right. If this thing ever got a season two, we'd probably go there for literally everybody. Just get everyone in a room together and turn off the lights. I mean, obviously that would never happen. They wouldn't turn off the lights. Gotta keep those viewing numbers up. But the kidnappers only communicate with her by cell and they realize that uh, if we want to save her family, if we want to find out who's doing this, we're gonna have to steal the painting for her. Otherwise her family are dead. And so with that, they come up with a plan. I need to get the last painting to save my family. Not like that, you can't. But we can. If they're gonna steal the last painting for her and they don't even know if her story is true. Seriously, you capture a thief so they go, oh, I was just made this way and give you a phone and suddenly, you're working for her. We came all this way to stop the thief stealing art, only to have a 30 second conversation and suddenly we're gonna do a job for her. But Granny and Joker now and things are about to go a bit awry. She convinces Joker to wind up the music box for her. Also, Granny could grab a spike from the music box and jab it through her hand. <laughs> What can I say? Justice delivered. Ironically, Castiel is causing this face at the same time elsewhere in the city. Of course, Granny takes it a little bit further after she uses her own oxygen cable to take care of business. Joker, not having the best of the time at the moment, we would absolutely be losing one of the cast had we not had one extra person coming. The best bit is Granny taking revenge for what Joker did to her before. Oh, you're having trouble breathing. Can't you breathe now? Luckily, although if it was anyone else in the Gotham Knights, I'd be saying unfortunately, Robin returns and saves the day, pulling Granny off her. Robin! What do you think happened? You literally saw the entire event right in front of your eyes. Well, I tried to be good and I got shaved with a ballerina. Yeah, it's surprising how often that happens. It's at least like once a week to me. Did you know the chicken stand? That's what you got from that situation? You literally walk into Granny killing one of your friends, and the first thing that goes through your head is, wow, she can stand. I feel like we're focusing on the wrong things here. But the rest of the gang are trying to work out how to break into a warehouse, and that is a remarkably overdone door. It's a biometric fingerprint reader. You know, there's kind of security which we can fit into a phone, but this is Gotham Knights, and so for some reason, they need all of this security for it. I also find it funny that the fingerprint reader is here next to all of the exposed wiring, and there is no gap in it in the door, so you have to open it up and expose all of the wiring every time you need access. Look, I know you might not care about health and safety in Gotham, but that's taking it a bit far. Biometric scanner hardwired into the system. I don't know why you're saying that as if it's some high-tech security. Oh, it's hardwired. You mean they've just run a cable to a computer? How difficult. Those guys must really know what they're doing if they use cables. Which means? It means they used a cable. Which means we need a fingerprint of an employee to get in. There's no way you just gave him that answer, right? There's a biometric fingerprint scanner of security. 
What does that mean? Means we need a fingerprint. I didn't gather any of that from biometric fingerprint scanner. Okay, and if you don't have that? Well, you don't seem to have much of anything at this point, do you? Including brains, if you don't know what a fingerprint scanner is. Then we have about 60 seconds after we pop the door open before the alarm gets... Why, when you break into a warehouse, does the alarm not go off for 60 seconds? Is this like one of those landmines in movies where you step on it and then it doesn't go off once you release the weights for like five seconds just to give you enough time to run away? That really seems what it sounds like. Smash and grab. Only faster. So this is a warehouse with advanced biometric security that leaves you just enough time to run in, steal what you want, and run out. I am never having these writers design a security system for me, if this is how they think they work. Even a house alarm doesn't wait 60 seconds to put the code in, but they still need to break into the door, and for that, Batbrat has a plan. He stole one of Robin's explosives, and I say stole. He is Batman's son, so him having Batman's gadgets is... Kind of fair. Harry, know you pinched that from her stash. Does it matter? It was owned by Bruce Wayne, and he inherited everything from Bruce Wayne. If anything, it's his stash. You wouldn't begrudge your jilted wife a drink. You're the one who jilted your husband first. How in all of this did the cheating wife become the Ah, oh, I'm just a poor innocent victim? No, I'd say you've earned it. When exactly did she earn it? Was it when she was banging you as Talon was about to murder her husband? Was was that it? I'd, I'd, I'd just like to keep track of when exactly she became the good guy in this scenario. Then would you join her? He's already joined you, love. That ship has sailed all over your face. Okay, one. I can only have one. Then we has got to be some recovery time. But then I'm putting you in a way security vehicle. I'd be very careful about that, dude. If you put her in handcuffs, you may need to. I suppose Miranda keeps calling because there's not a hospital notification protocol for informing patients' mistresses. Well, I don't know. Castiel found out, so there must be one for the wife's mistress. She's not the first. She probably won't be the last. You're literally saying that to the guy who was your first and not your last. I don't know why you keep trying to play the moral high ground. I'm sorry. Why are we apologizing to the whole- I think that Lincoln married me not because he loved me, but because he was looking for someone to play the role of a dutiful wife. We failed there then, didn't he? Because you are definitely not a dutiful wife. I also think it's perfectly reasonable to expect your wife to fulfill the duties of a wife. I don't know why this would be controversial. If she's not going to fulfill the duties of a wife, then why would you want her to be your wife? This seems like the most self-evident thing in the world. Otherwise, it'd be like employing somebody, but not actually expecting them to do any work. Well, it's a role you play very well. Played very well. Her husband is dying, and she's invited her fancy man around to his house. The first duty of a wife would be to close her legs. I'm not unhappy about Lincoln. Oh, love, I never would have guessed. That was over a long time ago. Oh, he just doesn't love me anymore. I couldn't be bothered to split up with him. I just thought I'd invite the next one in. 100% she's controlling talent. It's the regret that keeps me up at night. I thought that was the miles of dick. Or have you just nicknamed Castiel Regret? Which is probably how he feels about taking part in this show. I know. I'm a married woman. If you know you're a married woman, what on earth are you doing? The wife of your opponent, and you are Gotham's white knight. Saying wife really should have been enough, shouldn't it? But after spending the last three minutes talking about how great a wife we are, obviously, we're gonna go bang. I really hope that wasn't supposed to be a euphemism for Mr. Regret over there. And by hope it wasn't, I know it was. There is something really stupid about this scene, though. They're trying to break into the warehouse. So why does the door explode outwards? <laughs> The only way that would happen is if the explosives were on the inside of the door. Even the fire's coming outwards. So what did they do? Open the door, put the explosives on the inside, and close it again? You're supposed to have, like, pyrotechnic experts and stuff. Why didn't they tell you about this? The door has to go the other way. What you've got here is someone breaking out. Which is lucky, considering you wanted to get through the door in the first place. But with that, they run in. They've got 60 seconds to find the painting and get out before the security arrives. Because for some reason, this alarm doesn't go off for 60 seconds, despite the fact you've just detonated explosives. Yeah, they really upgraded security on this one. So they run in. Quite a big warehouse. We've got to look around. Luckily, they know a rough area of where the paintings are. I don't know how. Eventually, they find the paintings, but they do have a problem. Tell me what it looks like again. How do you not know what it looks like? Not only did we see it earlier in the episode ourselves, and both of those were looking at the computer screen when that happened. We were just in the car 20 seconds ago. Surely 20 seconds ago, she showed them a picture of what they were looking for, which means they've forgotten what it looks like while they ran here. <laughs> like I say, I just feel like I'm dealing with Memento this entire time. No one's got a long-term memory. Uh... It's a castle tower on an oceanscape with some sheep in front and a guy. The seascape. They're all seascapes. She could give them a lot more information than she has. They've got limited time, but for some reason, I, I can't think of the words. Does it have a ship? 
a lighthouse? Why are you asking her what it is? Why can't she just tell you she's the one looking at it? A looking tower thingy on a cliff, and I, I, I don't, I, I think those are sheep. Ah, 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 ah. You've got the picture in front of you, love. Why don't you just say what you see? <laughs> but eventually they find the painting. They're very obviously sheep. I don't know why we're all surprised about I don't know what they are. Are they giraffes? No offense, your great great whatever had crappy taste in art. But... They keep insulting the art throughout this entire episode. It's pretty weird. Feels like one of the writers had an axe to grind because everyone keeps commenting on it. 20 seconds. Unfortunately, with 20 seconds left, security turn up. Oops, I'm Guess we're in trouble now, especially as you blew one of the doors off, and so they must have been alerted by that door. So they're definitely guarding that door then, aren't they? How are you gonna get out of this one? But first, we've got to dodge the people looking for them. The guards are in here, I thought we had 60 seconds. Yeah, God, that was an estimate! What do you mean it was an estimate? You were counting down! If you don't even know what the time is, why are you going 20 seconds, 10 seconds, 5? Instead of just, I don't know, you might as well hurry up though. <laughs> Either way, they spend a while dodging them in the warehouse. It goes on for quite a long time, far longer than was necessary. Oh, it's so dramatic. The thing is, I still don't know why no one's thought of, they're definitely guarding the door. If they're searching the stacks for you because they know they broke through the door, they've definitely put somebody on the door, surely. Nope. <laughs> they literally just run outside through the same door. The door that would have set off the alarm, the only point of escape, which the security guards didn't even bother to guard. It's not like they fought somebody on it, they just run out. This is the most ridiculous heist in the world, only beaten by the one at the start of the episode for how stupid it is. But after that pathetic attempt at a plot point happened, we're now back at base, with Joker updating them about the actually good part of the episode. Because stigmata is not a good look for me. Nor is this show, love. You can do better. What did he find? Other than subpar brushwork, boring composition, and cliched iconography, nothing. Like I said, everyone's an art critic. Boring composition and cliched iconography. What's cliche about the ocean, a medieval tower, and sheep? If anything, that's just British history. And even if it was cliche, that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. But that's not the worst part, because please, oh blondie, tell me how you came to such incredible artistic critique when you spent your time looking at the back of the painting. You'll have to forgive me if I don't put too much stock in the critique of somebody who doesn't know which side the front is. Remember, we're supposed to think that this character is a genius. Yeah, her dad does quiz shows, don't you know? But despite the fact they know giving this painting to the Court of Owls, will definitely lead to something horrible, they decide to do it anyway. If they don't trade the painting to the Court of Owls in 30 minutes, then her family dies, and they think that that is worth whatever horrific acts the Court of Owls will do with this painting. That's how we end up here. Yeah, the Bat has the painting, but what, does he think he looks like the thief? I'm sure the police investigator was renowned for wearing a farmer's flat cap. I'm a friend of Detective Green's. Well, I guess at least he didn't pretend to be a... <laughs> the thing is, the Court of Owls don't care who he is, it's as long as you give us the painting, it's all good. So he hands over the painting, despite the fact he hasn't even seen the hostages yet. The Court of Owl guy tests it with a knife. It's real. Yeah, but you probably ruined the price a bit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure museums don't ensure authenticity like that. Oh yeah, there was the second part of dealing with the Court of Owls. Betrayal. Kill the hostages, whoever this is. Based economy. I have to say, I have to use that clip sparingly, because in this episode, I could have done it a lot. I don't think you want to do that. I don't think you understand how much I want to do that. But it turns out he's got a backup plan. Brought along really pissed off insurance policy. <laughs> like I said, they need their own TV show. So they very quickly realize we can't shoot Granny. We better just give them what they want. Well, we could shoot Granny, but if we did, we're probably not going to survive very long with a pissed off, invincible, immortal Talon. I mean, so far in this series, he has failed to kill literally everybody, but he'd probably succeed on the Court of Owls because they don't have plot armor. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know if you want to piss off the guy who's so fond of chopping off heads. Yeah, but will he actually manage to is a better question, because he's tried to kill you multiple times. He couldn't even take out the guy running for mayor, and he actually managed to hit him. Worst assassin of all time. But either way, they decide not to and release the hostages. The stupid thing is, the hostages run away, they get in the van, so Joker releases Granny, and no one fires? The moment she released Granny, you just shoot them all. No, we're just gonna- we're just gonna wait. We're not gonna fire anything. The car drives off, someone's in the driver's seat. There's a clear angle of attack. Nothing. Why are we not shooting at the car that's driving away? We were definitely willing to shoot them all five seconds ago. What changed? Sure, when Granny's in the way, don't do it. But when Granny isn't, fire. Worst villains ever. This is just incompetence. And so because of the incompetence of the villains that we're supposed to find scary for some reason, we're back at the clock tower, safe and sound. There's a bit more bonding time between the two geniuses that 
hated each other in the last episode, but now they're about to see some weird love triangle between the two of them. You saved me from a clip full of bullets from those drug smugglers. I guess we better become office equipment. The least I can do is help you clean up one. Still, thanks. You're welcome. Oh, at this point, just get it over with. Then we can move on to the next triangle as well. Then we get this scene where I've had to move them because nobody needs to see that part of Castiel. <laughs> Her husband is literally dying in hospital while this is going on. But yes, remember, she's the victim in all of this. She says, this is normally where I see the other part of you. I definitely think she knows two faces a thing. And I just wish things had been different between us. But as they're professing their true love to each other, she gets a phone call. Oh, he's... He's awake. Yeah, he probably sensed you being a rampant whore. But then we go back to the news. You know, the one that stole all of the art. Oh, she was brought in as a detective on the case, but she actually became a victim of the thief. Making her and even her own family a target of the criminal she was hunting. I don't know who they think stole all the paintings. So somebody stole her family, the Gotham Knights rescued them. Who do they think stole all of the art? Did she not tell them about the Court of Owls? Why does nobody care about all of the art that was stolen? The multiple millions of dollars worth of art. You know, it's even worse when a cop says it. Just because you did a good deed doesn't make you a good person. That's true, because no one in this gang is a good person. This series started with you all escaping from prison, and at this point, I just want to send you all back there, and for Joker and Granny to get their own TV series. They can escape. Thanks. You're welcome. Now, at this point, remember, everyone's forgotten about the coded book that we spent two episodes on, and so now, it's time for another completely accidental plot point that leads us on to the next part of the plot, because why should any of these people actually come to a conclusion by logic, or especially their own intelligence. We all know they don't have that. This is time for a pure luck. So she gives her the ballerina spike that she got stabbed with, but we put it back into the music box. Oh, that was lucky. It opened a secret compartment. She contains a load of photos of the Court of Owls. I guess we have our next clue on how to find them, which is lucky considering we've completely forgotten about that coded book that was going to give us all of the answers as soon as we decoded it and then couldn't be bothered to decode. Luckily, coincidence, as we found every single clue throughout this entire thing, is going to lead us on to next week as well. This entire show is just one long list of coincidences. But before we can even think, Harvey goes back to his office, and we find Batman's cheating house servant. What the hell are you doing here? My life is in danger. I really don't know why anyone should care. But she's panicking. I know what the Court of Owls is doing, and I love this city. Everything I've done is for this city and they want to destroy it. And we jump over to the Court of Owls, who start to set fire to all of the paintings. I'll tell you everything, as long as you can guarantee my protection. Well, he couldn't guarantee the protection of the last guy that was in his office from Talon, so I don't know why he would be able to protect you. But as everything burns, a second picture is revealed underneath. dun dun da What could it possibly mean? I don't know, but when we find out, it'll probably be via another coincidence. I really don't know how complicated it is to write a plot that carries on from the previous episode. But this show just forgets what happened before. We had an entire a two episode thing about how to work out a logbook and we've forgotten about it and it's nothing to do with this episode at all. We even mention it right at the start and then never do anything with it. No, instead we went on a random journey for absolutely no reason and then coincidentally found something at the end to carry us through to the next bit. Just like coincidentally we knocked Talon's knife onto the floor which revealed what the X's were on killing things. This has happened time and time again and I have a feeling it's going to keep happening. The owls aren't scary because they're incompetent at all times. Talon can't kill anybody that he's trying to kill, but we're all supposed to be scared of him. And the wife doesn't have a single moral leg to stand on. But for some reason, the show is desperate to try and betray her as the victim when she's the one causing all of the problems. Completely and utterly bizarre. And the only saving grace of this episode was bringing Granny back and pairing her with Joker. I actually really like those scenes, and I think it was a great pairing together, as it's two characters who can finally act, interacting with each other. Definitely a plus point, actually had some funny moments, and it is far from being able to save the episode, but at least for some brief glimpse of something in the show, you could see that maybe, just maybe, we could glean a few moments of entertainment from the series. And considering the state of everything else that we've had so far, at this point, I'll take what I can get. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.